I'm Becky from Secrets of the Southwest. We're here at Powdrum Castle today. Powdrum Castle is not so much of a secret, but their beautiful gardens are kept a little bit more secret. Naomi is here today to tell us about them and also to show us around a little bit. We're also here to tell you about a photo competition that we have running at the moment called I Love My Garden. Now, Naomi, tell me a little bit more about the gardens and a bit about the history of Powdrum Castle. Yep, so um, Powderham is about 600 years old. It was built back in 1391 um, and it's home to the Earl of Devon. He still lives here with his family um, today. And obviously we've been open to the, the public for about the last 60 years or so. Um, so people can come and visit, but we also have events and weddings here too. Um, and some beautiful extensive grounds as well, which we're gonna show you around. So I know that something that you're really keen on here at Powderham Castle is improving accessibility. Obviously that's what we're all about um, at Living Options Devon. Um, so tell me a little bit about um, your kind of accessibility and the tramper and um, all of that. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, obviously, castles weren't necessarily built with accessibility, you know, wheelchair access nope. and uh, <laughs> kind of steps and things in mind. So uh, we've really been trying to make um, some good changes over the past couple of years just to make sure as many people can come and enjoy it as possible. Um, obviously, the tramper has been something um, that has been amazing in kind of facilitating that. We've got some really extensive grounds here. You know, the Belvedere is about a 20 minute walk kind of from the mm. point that you arrive and up quite a big hill. So just having it means that people can either just pop up for a quick trip to the cafe if they can't necessarily make it up the hill or they can take it for a tour on um, for hours at a time just exploring the gardens and we've also been making um, some changes inside the castle too um, so we've recently uh, worked with the deaf academy to produce a sign language tour um, that goes with our audio guide um, we've also trained quite a few members of our staff up um, in how to use basic sign language so you know we can communicate th with people coming through the doors um, and we have started doing at the beginning of the season quiet hour um, so kind of with autism awareness in mind and people yeah. can just find um, some environments overstimulating they can come in and visit the castle at their own pace case um, just take it as they need and it, it won't be quite as bright or busy for them that's um, fantastic all good stuff definitely <laughs> um, so I mean this is your opportunity now to get out and explore if you want to have a seat and we'll head off yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're just heading up towards the secret garden um, which has kind of recently been re renamed is um, the kind of Victorian walled garden up there um, which is where we've got lots of cute animals um, and a veg patch um, and a charity based up there too and then further on we've got the beautiful American garden in Belvedere after that. Nice looking forward to seeing it. How are you finding the driving? Easy yeah it's um, definitely all, all terrain isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> when you get up to the Belvedere, you'll, um, you'll really be able to put it to the test. Um, so here we are at the Secret Garden. Um, it's quite often a bit of a hidden treasure for people when they come and visit us. Not that many people know that it's here, so... I certainly didn't have a clue that it was here in all my years I've been coming to Powdrum. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see it. It's a well-kept secret, I think, but I hope you'll enjoy it. We'll yeah. go inside. Hi. I had no idea this existed. We're just, we're just doing a little a little tour of the grounds. We can head up this way because we've got the goats and we can go and see Tessa. We, we, can, we can pass Tessa on the way. <laughs> oh, let's do some goats. Let's do some bread for the goats. Hi, guys. So we've got the goats in here. We've got Neville, Dobby and Luna. <laughs> Neville, Dobby and Luna. <laughs> Which one's Dobby? Um, Dobby is the little one. <laughs> This one here on the end. <laughs> They're all very friendly and we take them out for walks. They go on leads and visitors absolutely love it. <laughs> They're gorgeous. Um, and we've got uh, Kinder and Harry up here, the donkey and the pony. Um, and our big tortoise Tessa is just over there on the left having a sunbathe. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so, Kinder and Harry have been here probably for about 16, 17 years, I think. They've both lived in the secret garden for, and they are best friends. They absolutely love all the children and the attention they get. 
Uh, we've also got lots of birds and chickens, um, and we've got guinea pigs, um, alpacas too as well. Lots of different animals down here. So we're now in the American Garden. Um, it was created uh, by the third Viscount or ninth Earl um, back in the 1700s. Um, as you can see, it's a beautiful kind of open woodland space down here, um, very secluded and tranquil. Um, and down the end, we've got a lovely uh, pavilion as well um, that was built back then as kind of a Gothic summer house for them to use. It's absolutely gorgeous. I never knew it existed. Like this is a total secret. On a day like today, it's, oh, it's just um, perfect, just wonderful isn't to come it? Down here and bring a picnic. No better place to be. Uh, the pavilion was built as more of a kind of um, secluded space, an entertaining space. So um, somewhere that they'd have small gatherings and parties and dinners and things like that. Um, but very much a kind of place of relaxation, I think really. Um, and nowadays we use it for weddings. Um, so this beautiful space is really gorgeous to have a ceremony and with this as the kind of focal point at the top. So, um, so we're just gonna head up through this way now up to the Belvedere Tower, which is kind of a three story tower overlooking the estuary. Um, arguably some of the most beautiful views that Paolo has to offer, I would say. Um, and probably where the tramper makes most of a difference to visitors because it's even a struggle for me to get up there some days. <laughs> and would you say that this is another one of Powdrum's best kept secrets as well? Absolutely, yeah, definitely. People are always um, so thankful when we've kind of recommended them to, to head up there for the day, um, especially on a day like today when you can sit and enjoy the sun um, and take in all the views up there. So we're now at the top of Belvedere and uh, we made it to the top really tested the um, Tramper's all-terrain um, power, which is pretty cool. I've been joined now by Neil Warren, who is the project manager for Countryside Mobility at Living Options Devon. And he's going to tell us a little bit more about the competition that we have going on at the moment. Neil, tell us about it. Yes, well, thanks, Becky. Um, I hope you enjoyed using the Tramper today and you've been able to see the difference that the Tramper can make in terms of being able to access uh, beautiful places like this, beautiful gardens, yeah. and this fantastic view up here. Um, I know for many people who use the scheme, it wouldn't be possible to necessarily access these places Not at all. without the tramper. Um, and what we want to do is to make sure that that can continue to be available for people. The scheme's been going for about 12 years now, and obviously some of the trampers have been going for all that time. They need a bit of TLC. So we do a little refurbishment program program for them so we can bring them back up to scratch and make sure they can continue help people exploring and this competition is all about that um, that's the goal at least in terms of raising money for that but how it happens is by asking people to take a photo of their garden something they love in their Devon garden uh, so it's called I love my Devon garden take a photo maybe it's of a flower of the garden as a whole or we do have a character called George which hopefully may appear in the screen around now <laughs> and you can try and recreate that either by mowing it into the lawn or or creating a kind of pattern with flowers or i tried it with my cats but they didn't really seem to cooperate it <laughs> cooperate in terms of doing that um and basically you go onto a, a website we'll have a link in the description and hct turf which is a um a turf company just based outside of exeter here have very kindly said that for every entry they're going to give a pound towards the refurbishment of tramper and they're also managed to put together a a kind of hamper of Devon food and drink, which I yep, think you've seen looks, a photo of that. It looks delicious. I've definitely got my eyes on it. <laughs> yeah, I know, so have I. Um, so that's on offer to whoever, whoever wins the competition. So we really want as many people to enter it as possible, but time is running short. So you need to get your entries in by the end of June. So that's not that far away. So just send it in your entry, go onto that web link. Uh, you'll be able to post your, your photo there and enter the competition. We'll get a pound for every entry that goes in. So that would be fantastic. Hopefully get one of these trampers refurbished and be able to give people more access to places like this. So I hope you've enjoyed your day to day, Becky. I've you've enjoyed using the tramper. I've enjoyed using the tramper. It's really given me an insight into how um, this 
amazing Trampa can help people access these beautiful places. Um, if it wasn't for this Trampa, you wouldn't be able to experience this amazing view. So please help us with this competition that Neil's just talked about and um, help us get the money towards refurbishing one of the Trampas.